time when I was a child, did the old folks shake their heads and sigh? Things are different today. The summers were longer once with fragrant winds in evening. There were storks and chimneys then, and crickets. did they tell me things are different now? Once the smallmouth bass would leap from under the lotus, snapping at dragonflies. Once there were green mosses on the river stones. Why did they tell me? Hello. Yes, I've two of everything I can handle at the pond. No, of course I don't have whales. There simply isn't room. Well, I'm sorry too. Yes, the quails and pheasants. Ground squirrels and a, and a pair of skunks. The soil aeration is perfect so far. Plenty of earthworms. Oh, and I have a pair of salamanders too. Tortoises and tadpoles. I'll have to rely on the pond nutrition for that. Yes, I'll do the best I can. far, they'd say, as the eye could see, was wilderness all around. There was a lake here then where beavers toiled and deer would drink. There were lynx, they say, and bobcats too, and wild poppies blooming. Why did they map it out that way? Not one for calling creatures by pet names, for sugaring the wild blood, for housebreaking the sturdy beast into a neurotic shadow of myself. I like a falcon's talons to stay sharp. The sulfur dioxide content of the air at 3.42 p.m. today is 0.42 parts per million. The lead content of the air is 6 micrograms per cubic meter. The carbon monoxide content is 28 parts per million. In the downtown area, 328 and 40 seconds, the noise pollution at the corner of Main and High Streets was recorded at 90... We are of the same stuff, these creatures and I, of the same wild elements, combined in a chemistry of spit and sperm, 
in the spirit to survive. And whether microbe or man, our relation to nature approximates that of a fish to water. Until I sealed it off in glass, this pond was dying like a water hole in drought. But I nursed it back to health from my junkyard of pumps and paraphernalia, revived it in an iron lung of filtered air, trussed and braced it in the coils of a water distillery. Each earthworm nurtured, each life cell succored. Yet it is more much more than a puddle within a ramshackle of whitewashed glass. In this one shallow pond, I know the depth of all the salty seas. In my small pond vibrates a billion years of the birth of our vast planet, when our Earth was merely a molten lump, cooling after too much fire. water. From a holy silence, life wriggled into being. And whenever winds blew sea sprays over a cindery planet, living organisms rode on pseudopods and pogo sticks, trumpeting, here will I grow. Here will I grow. multiplied by millions, at times bizarre, but never useless. of life, all the rivers run back into the sea, 
yet the sea is not full. Into the place from where the rivers come, they return again. shallow pond in this small water's wet is an echo here will I grow here will I grow within this ramshackle of whitewashed glass I don't know where they came from, where they breed. I know only that they're destroying the life of my pond, and with it, I myself am dying in proportion. How like human beings they are in their senseless destructiveness, in their greed. Only man is more ruthless. That cloud of foul air hanging over us is the breath of human greed and we can blame nothing else for our predicament, not even the rat. Go oh, for a hungry hawk or a wise old barn owl. I'd prepared for another collecting trip to the world outside but at the last moment, I lost nerve. Somehow, I'd been here too long. I'd become a kind of hothouse human. In staying, I know that I'll remain here as long as is humanly possible, using all the skills I have in rebuilding the life family of this pond, if that can be done. Perhaps the nature of a life family is too complex to control, much less synthesize. Despite many setbacks, the pond is beginning to thrive again.
I'm up right there. I want the police. Downtown area, 9.15 a.m. The noise pollution at the corner of Main and High Streets was recorded at 100 to 110. Operator, this is an emergency. Decimals peaking at 120. This report has been recorded. The carbon monoxide content is 30. If, through this deluge, there emerges a last man, a Noah to carry on, that Noah must be all of us. Even then, the outcome is uncertain. All we know for sure is that the 40 days and 40 nights of this deluge of pollution and erosion and destruction began centuries ago. Now we are living through and dying through its last hours on this ark called Earth. map it out for me. As far, they'd say, as the eye could see was wilderness all around. There was a lake here then where beavers toiled and deer would drink. There were lynx, they say, and bobcats too, and wild poppies blooming. Why did they map it out that way? So the problem, as I saw it, in the environment was a moral and some of that is coming out right now. Uh, um, the current pope is losing uh, uh, people in the Roman church because he's coming out so strongly for the morality involved not only in pollution of the environment, but, you know, global warming, all that. So I said, this is a moral problem. And what is a Christian response to it? Should, should it be? And then I got the idea of this man uh, who builds a greenhouse. And Until I sealed it off in glass, this pond was dying like a water hole in drought. But I nursed it back to health from my junkyard of pumps and paraphernalia. And that's where I got the idea of Ark. And this man was a, a kind of Noah. It opened as a short subject at the Los Feliz Theater in old Hollywood. And, and it was reviewed by Charles Champlin, who was a crack 
film and theater critic for the LA Times. And it was shown in um, either big cities or college towns. After you see the film, ask yourself in that the uh, telephone scene. The telephones, the way they're used in that, are the only thing that date the film. Nothing else dates it. But who is he talking to? And I want, I don't want to say, I want the audience to say, if, if they break through that one, they get more out of the picture. Yes, I've two of everything I can handle at the pond. No, of course I don't have whales. There simply isn't room. And ARC people want to see it again and again since the uh, 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 internet came out and the Facebook and the computers and people can get a hold of me. Um, I've got letters and emails and what have you from from people who say, I saw ARC 30 years ago in a classroom, a science classroom in Pomona or, or uh, you know, Fayetteville or someplace, Peoria, Illinois. They, and I, I haven't never forgotten it. I got a letter, very carefully written, handwritten letter on very nice stationery, about three pages from an Indian woman, Amer by Indian I mean Native American woman, who wanted to know where she could get a print because she had seen it years ago. It was the only thing she seed, had seen that it corresponded with the Native American concept of the environment and the sacredness of the world we live in. And they've lost, I feel, the sense of moral responsibility. And that's what Ark is about. The man, like Noah in the scripture, is made to feel, or feels on his own, responsible. And in that sense of responsibility, wants to do something about it. And the people who come at the end are you and me, our, our neighbors. It's still a moral issue. They don't want to do something about it, and they resent the people who do.